Hello, everybody. Welcome to another exciting episode of Jimmy's Jambox. We're here. We're back at it again, and we're going to get on into it. But before we do, as always, please make sure to like, subscribe, push all the buttons, do all the things. You know, I don't know where they are, but you do, and I trust you. With that being said, here's a quick word from our sponsor. Coconut Genmaicha, a tropically inspired tea. This hearty and comforting Genmaicha pays homage to the traditional preparation with the addition of semi-sweet toasted coconut, pineapple, and rose. The Brothers Apothecary. Fine teas and remedies. Alright, thank you all so much for watching. Again, shout out, The Brothers Apothecary. Make sure to click the link below and go check them out. I guarantee you're going to like it. And with that being said, let's go ahead and get on into it. Here is today's guest. What's up, guys? My name's Louie B., Hello. How's it going, man? Hello. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Pleasure yeah. to be here. Let's go ahead and get on into it. Tell us a little bit about, you know, who you are, where you're from, what you do. Give us that, like, Tinder profile of your involvement with music. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I go by Louis B. My real name is Louis. Ah. And uh, I grew up in pretty much all over Vancouver throughout my whole life. Mm-hmm. Um I do a lot of I do a lot of music. Oh yeah, I love music. Oh <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was definitely looking at some of your your more recent stuff, and it, you've got a pretty fair catalog in a short amount of time. Yeah, thanks, man. It's a uh, it's been a journey so far. Yeah, it was like sure. a lot longer of a journey than the time acquainted for it. You know, yeah. it, believe me, I feel you. Yeah, I feel you. But let's start right at the beginning. What got you into music initially? It's actually kind of a funny story. Um, like I always loved music growing up, but like my introduction to Hip hop, which is what I truly love, was mm-hmm. Christian rap. Oh, okay. I wasn't necessarily allowed to be uh, listening to like mainstream stuff when I was younger. Understandable. Um, but we had a so fam- nefarious. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously though, we had a uh, we had a family member who was just playing Christian rap music one day, and I was like, "What is this?" And I learned that I was able and allowed to listen to it. Oh, okay. So, uh, I started diving into all different types of artists like Lecrae, Andy Mineo, um, Flame, Tadashi, you know, some of the bigger names, but uh, it kind of transformed over the years into listening to Eminem and Mm -hmm. Chance the Rapper and again, more of the mainstream stuff. But um, the more I listened to it, the more I just kept falling in love with it. And, you know, I was a big skateboarder and loved being active. So I found myself like always needing and wanting music yeah, uh, when I did those things and hip hop music felt very empowering and very like, you know, I remember before I realized I wanted to create music, I just would feel so compelled to be like, whatever it is I'm doing right now, I feel that much more about it because I had this music in my ear that's just like making me feel empowered and making me feel like I could do anything. Oh. So it had a a quick a quick grasp on my life, I would say. Yeah. Um yeah, firm one too, it sounds like. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, I I listened to other types of music as well, but like rap and hip hop were was where it always thrived in my heart. Yeah. And just that that you know, undying love to to find another artist and to find more stuff I haven't heard before, you know, um and it transformed into uh creating. Oh yeah. No, I love that. Yeah, man. And like growing up where was your family musical at all or like anybody in your household or was like, are you like the first generation of music creator? I would say, I'm, yeah, I think I am one of them. Uh, I had family members that would play instruments and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, like my uncles uh, played uh, piano and guitar and my great, or my grandma, she's a, a really, really nice on the piano. You know, she's a beautiful singer as well. So mm-hmm. That was probably the most exposure I had to my family. Yeah, um, like so it wasn't like constantly around. You. Right, right. Um, but my parents, they were, you know, they liked music, but it yeah. wasn't like some of the other stories where you hear where it's like my parents put me on this. They put yeah, me on this. it was like I kind of had to put myself on some of those things. But like I said, my uncle introduced me to that uh, that that Christian rap music when I was younger. Oh, okay. So that kind of filtered into what it's become. Yeah, no, I understand that for sure. I had my. I have an uncle who he like before he passed away. Unfortunately, he uh he introduced me to like everything. Yeah, like he was just like I, when I would 
come to visit my my mom because my parents live separately. That's how I ended up being up here all the time because my mom lived in Vancouver. Uh, every time I would come visit my mom, I would spend the day with my aunt and the evening with my uncle. And he'd be like, sit down, shut up, listen to this. <laughs> and he would just show me shit I never, ever like conceived of mm-hmm. hearing in my life. So I could definitely appreciate that. That's awesome, dude. Um, and then for this next question, yeah. this is one that we, uh, it's a bit of a format question. It's when we ask everybody. And this first one, we ask it early. We ask it often. And it's definitely a crowd favorite. What was the first album you ever bought with your own money? To be honest, like with the time that I started soaking in music enough to even think about listening to an album, I feel like they were always just already available. Like, Fair, yeah, like streaming, streaming and YouTube, like that, stuff like that. So I feel like the only money I've spent on albums were the ones that I've made to put out. <laughs> okay. But well, what was, what was like the first album that you like had to listen to like cover to cover all the time then? What was the first one that like really stood out to you? Oh man. Uh, Maybe not like the first, first one, but like think, think back. What's one you can think of? Definitely. Um, one of those artists I listed, Andy Minio, mm-hmm. he had a, a album called Heroes for Sale. And, um, oh, good album name. Yeah. Really cool name. Uh, we, I got to go see him and a bunch of the, those other guys live at a concert. Oh, hell yeah. And so, like, after that concert, I was like, I got to like listen to this album front to back. Yeah. And so there was that one. There was also this album called, uh, Anomaly by Lecrae. And oh man, I thought you were going to say the artist Anomaly. I was like, oh, well, hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, like, those, those ones were the earliest ones that I can recall where I was like, I need to listen to this front page to back page and soak it in and, and, uh, yeah, and just really take it for what it was. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Now, usually the following question is what was the first live show you ever went to with your, like that you wanted to go to was, is it safe to assume that that show you just mentioned? Was it? Yeah, I would say so. Um, I didn't really understand how much of an experience that was going to be. It was at the Rose Garden. So, it was okay. Like, yeah. Pretty big. Yeah. Uh, you're already starting off on the right foot for a good experience. Yeah, man. And I remember showing up. I did not know what to expect as far as how many people were going to be there, mm-hmm. like what the stage was going to look like. And I remember showing up outside and there was just people everywhere. And I was like, whoa, okay. These guys are pretty big. Like, I thought this was just a small community of listeners. No, it's, like, it's oh, yeah. Thing. Definitely. And then, uh, yeah, that, that show was, uh, mesmerizing, mesmerizing. Oh, I, I can only imagine. I, uh, I've definitely told it on the show before, but the first live show I ever went to was, uh, Ozfest 2005 mm-hmm. in Seattle. Like, I, like my dad wouldn't let me go see it in the Bay area. So when I flew up here, my mom drove me from Vancouver up to there and we went and saw that. And I was just like, what? what is this? Like there's, there's so many people. It was such an experience. That's cool. Like you get that anticipation, the ride to the show, like that long drive of, yeah, like, oh, this is going to be great. Like, man, I don't even, I have like zero memory of the drive up there. <laughs> like I, like a, a childhood Jimmy just blacked out <laughs> and like in preparedness for it. I didn't know what to think. Like my like biggest decision was like, do I wear my Iron Maiden shirt or my Black Label Society shirt? And so it was just, it was like, I have no memory of getting there and very few memories of getting back but i have like a hundred percent memory of my entire like step by step i can remember the whole thing yeah uh you're talking like at the show yeah yeah same same with the one that i went to it was it's engraved yeah hell yeah (laughs) yeah dude um and then uh moving right i don't want to keep talking about me we'll get back to you um do you have a defining moment like one where you were like ah music is for sure something i want to take like seriously like after you got into it what was the like solidifying point uh it was probably um an experience i had in high school where i was working on a i always loved english english class was like one of my favorites sam and uh i had written like an end of the year project poem for um my english teacher and we had to you know recite them in front of the class Mm -hmm. and so there's like proofreading that goes into a project like that so she had already read through it and knew what i was going to say and she was like she asked me how i felt about her recording me with her phone while i did it and i was like what i was like uh okay yeah sure so i you know i got up and did my thing and she's back there with her phone and i remember just being so freaking nervous yeah it was the first time that somebody had their phone out while i was reciting something that i had written like that and uh um, at the same time I was, we had been issued school issued iPads. Mm-hmm. And so I was able to like make songs, like just very, very basic songs, uh, through garage band. Yep. And my English teacher told my art teacher about her experience listening to me 
uh, recite my poem and he came to me and was like, Hey dude, like, I hear you're like kind of a poet. Like, do you like make songs and stuff? And I was like, well, yeah, on the iPad I do. And he goes, he's like, well, how about instead of you doing the work here in class, I'll just let you turn in a song a week on your iPad and you can just show it to me and I'll mark you off for full credit for what we're doing. Oh my God. Yeah. So like, what was that teacher's name? Do you remember? Shout out Mr. Walker. Yo, shout out Mr. Walker. You're getting one right now. That is, yeah, that is incredible. Yeah. And then such a cool thing. it, It was I'll never forget it, you know, and um, my English teacher, Mrs. Sharp, those two people like showed mass amounts of just love and uh, really fueled my confidence at a young age where, you know, especially in high school, we're all like still figuring out who we are, like probably still figuring out, figuring out who I am today. But yeah, in the terms of like an artist, like, is this something I want to do? Um, once I started doing that and turning my songs in like week well, I mean, to week. Even even getting it as the option, because, you know, like, you know, obviously we all to a degree cared about school. Right. You know, some more some more than others. Right. But like to be given such a freedom of creation as an opportunity to excel in school, like that's, I mean, first of all, a no brainer. Yeah. I would have loved that. But like, that's, that's, that is one of those moments where you're like, wow, like I get to do this thing that I love unbridled. Like there were no requirements other than turn one in. Yeah. No, a song a week. That's like at, at such a young, malleable age too. Like that's such a good way to like grow into your music. Right. Yeah. I had, I had been like in the year before that I had been just writing just bars and raps in my notebook so like mm-hmm. by the time it was uh that by the time that had came and he gave me the opportunity i was like oh i've got so much i can mm-hmm. over beats and, and i started writing new songs and he even went as far as to like he screenshotted one of the pages of my lyrics for one of the songs and like left it up on display for like other periods as people as the classes were going on oh that's awesome he just like loved it so much so like that really uh gave me a boost of confidence and i was like okay maybe I'll do music. This is cool. And then like, it just never stopped after that. Hell yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. That's, that's such a cool experience. Yeah, man. Sharing that. Of course it was. It was really neat. Yeah. All right. Now let's go ahead and let's get on into you in the current day. And we're going to get a super easy one out of the way. Okay. Kind of already said it. How did you pick the name? Oh, well, so Lewis is my real name. Mm -hmm. And so everybody used to call me Louie when I was younger. Like when I was a little guy, my family members mainly would just be like, you know, what's up, Louie? Come here, Louie. Yeah. Um, when it came to like actually finding a handle and like, I used to be King Louie and I didn't like the way that sounded. And I was like, okay, now I'm going on all platforms. You know, I'm not just on uh, SoundCloud anymore. Like, yeah. you know, could be reaching a lot more people potentially with this. Like what's something that is like easy to remember, easy to look up, but also is like me, like, yeah. you know, just staying true to myself. So I'm like, my last name is Brothlot. So like there was that idea, but it, I, originally I was gonna go with Louis Bambooey. <laughs> okay, I mean, uh, <laughs> there's another I, I see, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's another little nickname that I had, and so I was like, well, that's too much. But Louis B, Louis Bamboo, Louis Brafla, I was like, oh yeah, that works. That that's me. Yeah. So it, just like it literally is you just slimmed down. Condensed. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I I went with that, and it's it stuck. Hell yeah. No, I mean it's uh, it's easy to remember, and it's unique looking. Yeah, especially since like like because you don't do like some people do it with like a Y on the end, right? And I, I just, but the fact that you stuck to the I, and, like that gives it a really interesting shape. And B by itself is an odd letter to work into a word. Like I, I do this bit where I just kind of break down names. Yeah, no, it's now. Great. But the letter B standalone gives you so much room to like play around with it. Like you could have it be on the bottom side with like it facing down and the flat underneath it. Yeah. And that'll still like, it, it'll still read perfectly. The eye is going to be so unique for the end of the shape. So it leaves a lot of room just stylistically. And it's cool that it is literally just your name. That's cool. You just thought of that. I've never thought about like the style of how it like looks and appears. I've always just thought about how it sounds. I, my dad uh, did, did graphic art and design my whole life. So okay. I, I have a secondhand nature for just seeing these things, but okay. it is a really cool design in and of itself. So definitely something to play around with in the future. Yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah. But let's go ahead. Let's dive on into your writing style. Yeah. And we're going to, we're going to break it up into chunks, but we're going to start right at the beginning. So when you get inspired, you're ready to make music, you sit down, you, you got your space. What are some of the things you do to get a track started? I would say it, kind of depends on what comes first for me like if it was the beat 
Mm -hmm. or if it was just like a really compelling line that I had. And do you make your own beats? No. Um, I have like made beats with producers before, but um, most of the beats I use are off BeatStars, off different, you know, websites where you can buy them. But I usually always find them through YouTube. Yeah. And then, you know, click the link or whatever. Um, But yeah, I would say it starts with one of those two. And if it's the beat that I'm starting with, then I'll like sit down and be like, okay, what's the vibe of this beat? Like, what is a good... A vibe of a song that would like match what's going on with these instruments and like the flow of the the melodies and everything that you could come up with um and then i'll just start trying to grab an idea of what i think is good over the song and just start diving into my brain of like okay is this a story is this just like me talking about fun times or me like you know as rappers we talk about ourselves a lot in music so it's sometimes it's that and if it's uh if it's like the line came first and I thought of like a really cool bar or like maybe like a part to a hook, mm-hmm. then I'll start searching for a beat that fits like where I'm wanting to take that. Mm. So it just kind of depends on which comes first. Um, but yeah, I would say that's probably oh, yeah. it. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then once you get a track finished, so not maybe not like produced and put out and things like that, but once you've written a whole track, how long does it usually take you to get comfortable to the point where you can perform it? It's a good question. Um, I would say it's the time has become shorter. It used to be like, I don't want to perform this until I've, I've recorded it all the way and I've listened to it a thousand times and yeah. I've like, you know, had the chance to wrap it a thousand times. But um, I would say probably like a, two weeks after, you know, if I, if I have the intent that I'm going to perform it, mm-hmm. then I'll just start acting like I'm performing it as I'm listening to it. Smart. Um, and yeah, if it's one that I'm really like, uh, passionate about and like the people need to hear this right now because this is what's on my head this is what's in my heart right now like I need to share this with people I feel like personally that's one of the best times to perform it because then whoever is experiencing that performance will get to get a better full picture of like what that song means to you when you know that passion is like pouring out of your voice and your yeah. face and your mannerisms and everything when it's fresh even yeah exactly yeah oh yeah oh yeah and then looking back on, let's say the last year. So we'll look at all of like 2023. Okay. In that time, did your process change a lot or did it get more solidified or how, how did your process expand on itself? Um, I would say that, uh, like structurally. Yeah. I mean, just like, do you, like, did you get like quicker or something? Do you feel like you take more time? Did it change at all? Or did you just kind of stay consistent because you have something that works? I would say I probably, st- I stayed consistent most of the time. You know, I'm always trying to take notes off of um, my last pro- my last project and my last song and apply what I've learned to the next. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, it generally stays the same. It's like rinse and repeat. Yeah. But like I do kind of fall out of my own parameter sometimes and try something new. It's like, oh, this is fresh. This is cool. So, yeah. Do you uh, do you record yourself? Do you go somewhere to do it? Or uh, I got to shout out Heaven Sent. He's an artist out here as well. And uh, he's recorded every single song that I've recorded for the past, like, six years. Oh, hell yeah. Um, he is a very talented guy, and um, we actually live together now. We didn't, oh, we didn't used to, but now we do. So um, when I record, I just walk down the hallway. and. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I mean, if you got somebody that close, why not? You yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, man, it's been a blessing for sure. Oh, yeah. Now, I want to take a moment, and I want to talk about some of your music. Yeah, please. So I know re- your most recent track that you put out is Port- uh, Portland Pothole. Yeah, man. And that definitely a fun one. Yeah. But I Thank really want to dive into Go Crazy. Okay. <laughs> because, I mean, first of all, it was super hype. The beat was a lot of fun. The tr- like, you really you really leaned into it. Yeah. Um, and I mean, like, it kind of gave, like, almost, like, super, super low-key, like, baby no money, young gravy kind of Yeah, vibes. dude. Um, but also I noticed, because I listened to almost all of your tracks. I mean, like, uh, Thoughts on Cloud Nine was a lot of fun for sure. I really liked the, the wordplay, the patterns. Um, uh, what is it? I Sorry, I have it on my notes here. Intercontinental Ballistic Music, Rad Album, super thank clever you. name. Thank you. And I, I appreciate that you put skits at the beginning of all your albums. Yeah, yeah, thank you. But in Go Crazy, you had this different type of word economy. There was something about your approach to it that is almost something I could hear in every single track, but it like it it was a little different. There mm. was something about it that just really sat with a like, ah, this is what this guy should sound like. Okay. What was it about that track that made you like how is that track different? What did you do for that one? 
A great question. Uh, that's one I've thought about myself a lot because it does. I've noticed like I was like, this is different. And I think it was mainly the beat, like the beat just pulled that out of me. Mm -hmm. And when I found that beat, I was like, this is not a beat I would normally use. Mm. But it really I couldn't stop listening to it. I was like, I got to write something over this. So I was just really in the mindset of just have fun and go crazy with it. Like, yeah, don't necessarily think about, you know, uh, like line for line and then review it and be like, hey, am I sure this is what I want to say? Like mm -hmm. that song was just, it just flowed right out of me. And I just really let the beat do the work as far as like what it was making me feel and what I wanted to say. Um, and now yeah, I've thought about that myself and I keep chalking it up to that answer is like, I just, I just really tried to have fun with it and not think about it very much. Just, just let me do my thing with the beat. Yeah. Well, I, like I said, that was the one that like really jumped out at me. And I mean, again, honorable mention to thoughts on cloud nine. I really liked that one as well. There was, there was a cadence in it that just kind of carried through thoughts on pump nine. I think right, thoughts on, ah, oh, my thing said cloud. I apologize. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's nine, okay. You are correct. <laughs> my bad. Uh, but yes, thoughts on pump nine. Yeah. There was, there was a, there was a like melodic element is in the right, but there's something about the consistency in the flow that I think really latched on and it, sh it really shone through in go crazy. Like that was, that was the moment where I was like, ah, this is it. This is what I was thinking of okay. with that previous track. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. So just a little bit of observation. Yeah, no, I love that. I love hearing the, you know, what it's perceived yeah. uh, as uh, with other people. No, totally. And I mean, not to, not to discredit the rest of your music. Like I said, I did check it out. Oh, no, I dude, really man, enjoy I'm it. I mean, um, I mean, it's cool now, like, cause having checked it all out and then hearing you tell your beginning bits of like how you got into it, how making music was introduced to you. It's cool to see that your style has evolved through the settings that were presented to, you know, coming from English class, getting an opportunity to literally do a track a week yeah. at such a young age. Yeah. So it really carries through. Um, but I'm curious to know, what is your favorite song to perform? That's what Go Crazy is okay. one of them. I, I had a feeling, it's, it's but one I had them. to ask uh, If you're ever at a show when I'm doing that song, you'll see why. It's uh, it, The crowd never ceases to just go crazy. Uh, I was going to say everybody just sits down, yeah. closes their eyes, just <laughs> meditates for a moment. Like reading a book. Yeah. There was actually the one time I was doing a really hype song like that, and then like, I had a friend taking a video, and... You can just see a guy in the background, just like not there's, caring at all, just reading a book. There's always one. There's all. I don't know what it is. I think it's the same guy. It might be. Like I think every time you've ever seen a guy reading a book in the background, it's just the same guy. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how he makes it to every show. Shout out to guy reading the book, but it's the same person, and yeah, he's man. existed for ages. Yeah, he's he's quick with it because he can be here and then he can be in New York tomorrow. Yeah, it's incredible. His <laughs> flying miles must be insane. Um. And then looking at your current sound, so like music that you even haven't put out yet, mostly mm -hmm. I want to focus on, what are some of the like characteristics and like attributes of your sound that you really enjoy that's for stuff that you've either like most recently done or are coming out soon? Um, I would say layers, like when I do layers with uh, harmonies mm -hmm. or melodies, or maybe it's just a different like, or the same section of bars, but wrapped like with a slightly different uh, tone or delivery over the same spot. I have a lot of fun. Um, that was actually something I noticed consistently through your music as well is that your layers are not just you doing the same thing twice. Yeah. And even uh, the, I can't remember the name of the track, but the track with Santavo. Oh, is it Illusion of You? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that one had a really cool way of doing it for both of your voices, I thought was really interesting. Thank you. Um, and that was something I did notice is that your layers are not just doubles. They are like tonally very different. Yeah. Yeah. When I'm recording it, I try to, when I'm in that pocket of like, okay, I'm going to do a layer here. Mm -hmm. I just try to like make my voice present what I feel like would sound good, whether it's like kind of a grungy, like raspy voice over my clear, mm -hmm. nice, you know, take or um, whatever the case is. But yeah, man, that, that, and uh, like having fun with ad libs is also a lot of fun. That you I, know, ad libs are a lost art. Like, yeah, man. I feel, not a lost art, but they're they're underappreciated. Absolutely. Like when you get a good ad lib, it can give a whole different character to the song completely. Yeah. Yeah, that's something I've definitely learned over the years, like how to implement that and where to implement it. Cause before I it was just bars, no layers, no ad libs, no dubs, just having fun with it. But yeah, the more I've experimented with that, uh the say like the qual the better the quality of the track ends up coming out because you don't have so much like dead space or you just have like a part that's enhanced a little bit mm -hmm. or, 
you know, you really want them to latch on to the end of this bar. So you might say something that's like, I don't know, that kind of just grabs their attention. Yeah. Or even like just the, the, like the presentation of a slight change in sound Mm -hmm. without it, like just changing the song. Mm -hmm. But it, like you said, enhancing is a really good word because it can emphasize things that kind of, it, it's the added thing like you know when you like read how a word is pronounced in the dictionary yeah it becomes those those nuances those characteristic attributes absolutely yeah i totally agree with that oh yeah um and then for this next question this is probably the densest question we have in the interview i gotta go oh uh, well (laughs) uh but we you know we've talked a lot about you know your experience with music the actions the reactions the things that you've done and are doing Mm -hmm. but when it's just you and music one-on-one yeah what does music give back to you? It's that, that same feeling I felt when I was a kid, when I first started listening to music really heavily, it's just, it makes me feel like uh, a number of things, like motivated, mm-hmm. um, inspired. Like, it's funny how we can inspire ourselves sometimes because there's like, there's you and then there's the artist part of you. Yeah. And when that artist part of you is able to take over in that setting where it's just you and the music, you like read it back to yourself as you Mm -hmm. and you're like, whoa, what I just say? Or like, whoa, what is this? When you come up with that one line where you're like, that was more clever than I am. Oh yeah, man. Yeah. Those, those are great moments. Um, and I would say also like the idea that while I'm writing it, I like have seen how it's impacted people around me and people that I've met at shows and whatnot. So I have this kind of idea in the back of my mind, like, I wonder who this is going to help. I wonder who is having a bad day that's going to listen to this when it's out and for, you know, for whatever reason, they just are now in a better mood or now they feel motivated or now they feel some of the same emotions that I felt when I was creating it. Like, that's the biggest one of what I think it gives back to me is like just that, that hope that it's going to help change somebody's life for a positive matter. Oh yeah. Yeah. I love that. And that's, that's a cool perspective because that, that skates a, a line that I think everybody kind of mentions at some point in their interview, which is the, do you write music for yourself? Do you write music for others? You know what I mean? And like the argument is, oh, you should always write music for you because then the people who like it will like it because of you is you. Yeah. But I think music is, is meant to be shared. You know what I mean? Like it, like, you know, nobody puts music out on Spotify so that nobody listens to it. Right. If you didn't want anybody to like have an opinion, you just wouldn't show anybody. Mm-hmm. So I think it's cool that you can stay true to yourself and intend for it to matter mm-hmm. to other people because that is, I think that's the true middle ground. Yeah, man. Yeah, there's definitely uh, layers of it where it is just, I'm just vibing and I'm like impressed with myself and I'm yeah. just like, okay, <laughs> this is freaking cool. Like, I feel like a freaking badass right now because I'm coming up with some crazy stuff right now. But a song like Go Crazy, like, mm-hmm. that did that for me. I didn't realize how much that was going to, like, people were going to resonate with that song and like just freaking love it. But, um, yeah. Hell yeah. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to move on to some hypothetical questions. Ooh, okay. And for these sky's the limits, the questions are all made up. So the answers are allowed to be as well. Okay. The first one's pretty straightforward. If you could work with any one person, the only requirement is they have to be alive. Who would you want to work with and how would you want to work with them? Just one person. Yeah. Yeah. That, <laughs> I, the, the limitation, I think, really kind of adds a, a yeah. to the question. Yeah. No, that's great, though. Uh, I would say, may sound like an interesting answer, but I'd say John Bellion. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, yeah. And how would you want to work with them? In any way, shape, or form. Like, I, that guy is so talented uh, structurally. Uh, he's an absolute musician. You know, he can have a bunch of people in the same room who know how to play instruments and he can like, you're making a beat. You're like, I need a little more of this. I need a little more of that. Yeah. He just tells them, okay, come up a little more on the cello. He's like flute, come down a little bit. And then giving them, you know, more, uh, ideal musical terms, but basically watching him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Watching him like conducting. Yes. There we go. That was the word. Yeah. Watching him do that with a room full of people is just like his understanding of music is to me on a, on a different level. And um, he's also a very, very good writer. I've been inspired by a lot of uh, his songs and his writing capability. Mm -hmm. And to know that he, from what I know, doesn't have ghost writers. Like, you know, he writes everything himself and uh, very um, powerful messages, very like compelling, uh, just things that get you to think. 
about what he's gone through or to feel an emotion. Like I felt, I feel like every type of emotion that you can feel listening to music, listening to John Bellion. Oh yeah. And um, yeah, I just, I would love to meet him one day. That would be amazing. No, that would definitely be an experience for sure. Yeah. And then subsequently, who's a local artist that you're aware of that you haven't gotten to connect with yet, but you would like to? Hmm. Man, dude, it's like, I need to expand my, how many people I know, because I feel like there should be a more people that I haven't really met yet. Mm-hmm. Um, are you saying that I haven't met? or you, just you, Yeah, you could have met them, but, but we haven't worked like, together have, yet. You haven't like done music with yet or like, haven't performed with yet or anything like that. But just like somebody you would like to work with. I mean, probably, man. Figure eight's been on my list for a while. I've oh, wanted yeah. to work with figure eight. I mean, dude's definitely accessible. Yeah, everybody add him in the comments. We could definitely make that happen. Yeah. 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 He's a, from every experience I've had with him, he seems like a really solid guy. Oh, rad I've dude. Heard nothing sure. but good about him. Rad and, dude. I know. mean, he's been on the show a few times now. Oh, okay. Yeah, he has. Yeah, I, uh, see, I saw one episode with him on here. Well, he, he did one standalone when we talked about his album, and he also has one with a few of the fish. So, okay. Yeah. Okay, there you go. That makes sense. Yeah, if I thought about it longer, I'd probably come up with another name, but... I mean, I think that's a great answer. That's the first one, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and then for this next one, like I said before, sky's the limits, and it's pretty literal here. But if you could perform anywhere in the world, and you wouldn't have to worry about crowd access or building stability or power, it's guaranteed the best lineup, guaranteed the best show, and it doesn't have to be a venue. Like I said, literally, all the things will work in this scenario. I love it. <laughs> Where would you want to perform? Okay, so I saw Nosey's episode and I saw him say like the, he's like somewhere in the snow and like the whole like picture you guys painted, I was like, damn, that would be so sick. But I would say uh, a freaking, dude, a freaking like aquarium, like a whole ass like oh hell yeah live like huge room. There's like sharks and fish and stuff swimming over you, but you got like lights down there. Oh, do it in like one of those like tunnels where like all yeah the- oh that would be insane, oh, bro. My God. And like I could just like the fish, dude. I feel like they'd be dancing too. Yeah, like we have a we have a uh, a, a little aquarium at our house. Just, mm-hmm. like, got some fish in it, and like shit, you not. Sometimes we'll be playing music with the speaker. It's really loud. And like, they'll just vibe. They'll all come up to the corner and all be huddled together and almost look like they're like Whoa. getting down to the music. I was Whoa. like, bro, even our fish are musicians out here. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. No, that's a great question. That's a great answer. <laughs> In fact, uh, that's the aquarium is one of my favorite places. Oh, heck yeah. yeah. yeah your face like lit up when I said aquarium. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I've, I've never, cons- like, cause I would, now I would, lo- I always like kind of like pick spots I would want to do sh- like an episode of the show. Yeah. The aquarium is such an accessible, real answer. Yeah. Like, oh my God. Might have to figure out how to do a showcase. Yeah. Like at an aquarium. Or somebody, somebody at an aquarium, just uh, out of any of them, pick one. <laughs> Yeah, we got to get in touch with the the owners of an aquarium for True. sure. I feel like that would actually be like not very far out of reach if you had. Oh, no, that's what I say. Like that's a reasonable concept. Yeah. I really like that. Yeah. We'll, we'll save that for off camera. Okay. We'll, we'll dive into the logistics there. Okay, cool. Um, For this last question, at least in the hypotheticals, if you could get one more album from anybody, they could be alive, they could be dead, they could have not put out an album in a hundred years, they could have put out an album yesterday. Who would you want an album from? Mac Miller. Good answer. Mac Miller. Yeah. At first I wanted to say Logic, but I'm such a Mac head. I love Mac Miller and, you know, rest in peace. Yeah. So to have another album from him, yeah, I think the last one we got from him was Swimming. And uh, I remember being crushed. Yeah. Being like, oh man, this is the last one. So it would be, I would be a very happy camper if we were to get another album from mac yeah but hopefully one that was like he had made it and put it out not like a like postpartum one <laughs> yeah exactly exactly logic though is also a good answer yeah i think if i i, I think when logic goes back to his earlier sound like I, I know his most recent album was kind of in that direction mm. but like if we could get like same era as like greatest story ever told or the incredible true story the incredible true story yeah, and i'm just not on top of names today i just listened to that album like three days ago too that like if we could get a that era logic album again oh. see the the time when i was writing those songs for my art teacher mm-hmm. that's the album i was banging non-stop that's such a good like i don't care what anybody's opinion of logic is yeah. 
that album is just such a good dude album. The, is, oh, is, man. is that where you got the inspiration for the first skit at, or for the skit at the beginning of ICBM? The skits in general. Uh, I mean, Eminem has done skits. Joyner Lucas has done skits, but like I mean, skits aren't a, a, a new concept right, per se. Yeah. But the beginning of that felt very much, yeah, like this, uh, yeah, yeah, this, yeah. This next album that's coming is like very heavily inspired by the Incredible True Story. Because I again, oh, yeah. like, I found myself recently through the making of that, listening to that album over and over and over again. It's, it's like, definitely in my, like, monthly rotation. Yeah, man. Like, there's just something about it that I gotta keep coming back to. Yeah, the depth, the the sk- the, the reoccurring skits that mm-hmm. are, like, telling a story throughout the whole thing. Like, I just thought that was so cool. There's also a cool sound design. So, like, first of all, the fact that they got the, the voice actor did Spike from Cowboy Bebop, like, that, right? that's huge. I mean, if for those of you that don't don't know i'm a bit of a fan oh shit yeah oh, um shit. but when you listen to those skits if you hear in the back like the low rumble that the spaceship is supposed mm-hmm. to be giving like the way that they like interact with things uh the way that the ai voice like changes itself and has a personality of its own but is still very AI. like everything about it you can see like you just with your ears you can see the inside of the spaceship, you can see them talking. Like it, it, it feels very like visually attainable. Yeah, but there is nothing that like you never get to like other than like the cover. You don't actually see what that space looks like. Right. Yeah, that cover gives you like the only visual that yeah. you have. So then you just picture those guys in their environment that they're in. Yeah. And he does such logic does such a good job with painting a picture with his words, Mm -hmm. but also has proven that he can paint a picture with sound effects. Yeah. And, you know, having things just like what you said, that's, that's really cool. Yeah. Well, thanks. Thanks for diving through that one with me. Heck yeah, dude. Um, But we're going to go ahead and we're going to start wrapping this up. Yeah. What can we look forward to between now and September? September. Uh, So I have an album coming out called Sonic Blooms. Nice. And nice. that's good name. Thank you very much. And that's the one that is inspired a lot by uh, The Incredible True Story by Logic. Um, shortly after that, I plan to uh, drop like pretty much a full merch line mm-hmm. like, of, you know, all different types of things. Um, lots of shows, lots of shows coming up, lots of features. Um, by the start of, well, yeah, end of September, by closer to the start of next year, I hope to be like starting to tour the oh, yeah. like the West Coast or just like you know some locations on the West Coast. But so between then and now, um, or now and then rather, uh, just like lining all that out, putting things out, and just not stop with content and um, more videos, more music videos for sure. Oh yeah, I want to uh, get that catalog built up. No, definitely, yeah. Um, and then for this next one, go ahead and look straight at the camera yeah. and tell everybody how they can find you. You can find me on all platforms at Louis B L O U I B. And, uh, I'm on all platforms. Oh yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, any other plugs, any other shout outs, anybody else you want to put on while you're on here? One more time for my boy, heaven sent. Uh, he's helped me grow a lot as a musician, as a person, my understanding of music has grown Uh, tremendously since i started working with him and uh like my whole crew is to think but you know i wouldn't have met hardly any of those guys without without meeting heaven sent so oh yeah he's like at the top of my list for sure oh yeah all right now we've got one last question to go okay but before we do i'm gonna steal the camera for just a second all right just give it back (laughs) (laughs) as always y'all please make sure to like subscribe push all the buttons do all the things you know i don't know where they are but you do and I trust you. And one more shout out to the Brothers Apothecary. Make sure to click the link below and go check them out. I guarantee you're going to like it. And with that being said, the final question. Final question. And this is entirely up to your interpretation. My interpretation. But what is an album you feel is more on the obscure side? So deep cut, not a lot of people would have heard of it, but it's one you think everybody should go listen to. Um... I would say, I think it's Neverland by Andy Mineo. Okay. Yeah, he's okay. like, he's a Christian rap artist, but he, you know, he's not, he's not necessarily hundred percent focused on like what you would expect to hear from no, an artist totally. like that. Like he talks a lot of real life. He's really, really nice with the bars, with mm-hmm. the, you know, the again the structure, um, and there's the sonic, like, pleasure that your ears hear when listening to his music. Like that whole album. Um, has a lot of like 
fun, heavy bangers, mm -hmm. but then also some heavy stuff that makes you like rethink your past or rethink your future. And uh, that's the one I, I still listen to today. I would say Neverland, Andy Mineo. Hell yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and get up on out of here. Thank you so much for joining us. And thanks for having me, bro. It's been fun. Yeah. It's been a lot of fun. And this has been another exciting episode of Jimmy's Jam Box. I'm Jimmy. I'm Louis B. And we're signing off. Later, y'all. That's a wrap. This is not a podcast. This is a show. Keep jamming.